Hey, this is Tao Chow with MTG Forge, and today I'm going to talk to you about a new deck that I put together. I was looking for an interesting deck at a year, and I came across this card called Puka's Mischief. And I suspect this is actually where Puka Trade, uh, the website, uh, named itself from. But it's actually a really kind of a fun and interesting card, so I thought, you know, if I could maybe build around it, it might be a fun deck to try and play. I looked around and got a few ideas online from different places, um, from a ton of different places, but I think this is like the best that I was able to come up with. Uh, it's kind of a combination of different people's ideas. Uh, it's not all just my own by, by any means at all, but uh, it's definitely not really a net deck either. So um, let's get started. The key to the deck is Puka's Mischief. Now, what this card allows you to do is, at the beginning of your upkeep, you can trade one of your cards for one of your opponent's cards. Uh, as long as your card has a higher converted mana cost, and it can't be a land, of course, either. So, what this means is that you can take your cards, and it, basically a junk card that you put out, and trade it away to your opponent. Now, this isn't uh, doesn't seem really great because it means you have to play a whole bunch of junk cards, right? Um, it, but it actually works out pretty well. Now, one of the things to remember is that most things in modern cost three or four mana, like the the real threats, anyways. So this is how we are going to play it. So what we do is we start off with a whole bunch of just uh, enchantments that try and knock things out. So we have things like Journey to Nowhere. Okay, so when Journey to Nowhere enters the battlefield, exile target creature. Okay, the thing is you want this enchantment to stay on the battlefield, right? Because what you can do is you can use Puka's Mischief and trade this. So what you can do is you can... Let's say your opponent drops something big, uh, not huge, let's say like a Vampire Nighthawk. Okay, what you can do is you can cast Journey to Nowhere and exile the Vampire Nighthawk. Then later on, let's say they happen to just have a one drop, like uh, Typhoid Rats or something. Then what you can do is you can then take this Journey to Nowhere and trade it for your for their Typhoid Rats. So they're stuck with this Journey to Nowhere with their, with their uh, Vampire Nighthawk underneath it, and you've got their Typhoid Rat. Uh, same thing goes basically for Oblivion Ring. Okay, so Oblivion Ring is really nice, uh, especially because it doesn't have to exile a, a, a creature. It can any it can do any non-land permanent? Uh, a must-have is Detention Sphere. Okay, so Detention Sphere is awesome to have in there. Um, especially later on, I'll talk about with Venser as well. It works really it works really great. Um, compulsive research. I had an extra slot, and I could have put an extra Gataxian probe in there, but I th actually found that this is a handy little card to have, and it's come in handy quite a bit. So this is actually a good include, but I wouldn't put uh, wouldn't put too many. A uh, one of is is nice. Nevermore is a nice one because it doesn't matter who controls it. So when you cast Nevermore, it costs three mana. You play it. You name a card that can't be cast, and then you can just trade that away to your opponent for one of his creatures. All right, so that's the essential part of our uh, our control and removal package. Now, what we also have is a set of fog banks to keep us safe in the early game because it takes a little while for us to get online, but it's not as bad as you think. Fog bank and wall of omens uh, both can uh, keep us safe for a while. Can can hang on, like can keep our opponent back for a short time or for at least a little while. Sometimes for a long time. Um, in the meantime, what we're doing is we're casting Oblivion Rings and Detention Spheres and stuff until we can get to our Puka's Mischief. Right? So even if we don't start it in hand, we have ways of finding it. Okay, Wall of Omens helps us dig for it. Okay, uh, because it has, uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Gitaxian Probe is the same thing. Now, Gitaxian Probe isn't totally necessary to have. Any uh, cheap card draw spell could work, and Gitaxian Probe is pretty is kind of expensive. It's one of the, the more expensive cards in the deck. So, if you wanted to take it out, that wouldn't be a big deal. Okay, so Wall of Omens and Fog Bank is gonna are gonna keep us safe while we while we start building up our our while we while we start exiling things. And then uh, what we can do is also cast spells like Br Bronze Bombshell. Now, you've probably never heard of this. I never had before. Uh, and someone suggested it. And basically what it does is when your opponent controls it, it just blows up and causes them 7 damage. Okay, so what you can do is if your opponent casts something for 3 or 4, or even 1 or 2 if you want, you can just 
put this you can just trade this away with Puka's trade with Puka's mischief and then when they you get their their permanent and then when they get your permanent it blows up on them and causes them seven damage in the other on the other hand it actually turns out to be a pretty good beater because uh, usually by the time you get this out you've exiled all your opponent's stuff and they really can't ju- they just can't do anything against it and so you're striking for four every time uh, and it's not too bad you know, so it's a it's a pretty good card, and it can't be used against you. So that's why it's a, a nice one. The other one I put in there was Salt Skitter. Now, Salt Skitter is probably one of the worst cards in Magic. Uh, so whenever another creature enters the battlefield, exile Salt Skitter. That's another creature on either side. Return Salt Skitter to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Now, what this means is it has to return under its owner's control, not its controller's control. So what you can do is you can trade Salt Skitter to your opponent. So you can trade it. And then, let's say you play it on your turn, your opponent doesn't do any, doesn't cast a creature, so now you have it. You trade it to him, and then you cast your own creature, like another Wall of Omens or a Fog Bank or something like that, and then you get your Salt Skitter back as well, right, on top of there. So you basically, it's kind of like you gave, you traded them, and then you took back your thing as well. Um, now this works synergizes really, really well with Venser. Now Venser is a must-have. It's basically, uh, it costs as much as almost the entire rest of the deck. Uh, it's pretty expensive. But Venser is a key in the deck and works wonders. It's so good. Okay, usually by the time you get Venser out, you've got like two or three Wall of Omens and two or three Fog Banks going, a whole bunch of Oblivion Ring stuff. Um, but Exile target permanent you own, return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of your next end step. So what you can do is, you can do that for your land, for instance, if you really need to. What I love to do with this is put it on Wall of Omens. Okay, so you exile your Wall of Omens, at the end of turn, it comes back, and because it entered the battlefield again, it can give you a new card. So you can use this to keep drawing cards and digging, uh, digging for your Puka's mischief. Now, another cool thing you can do is it can work with Detention Sphere. So what you can do is, let's say like in one game, for instance, uh, my opponent cast um, like an Elvish Mystic or something like that, right? So I cast a Detention Sphere on Elvish Mystic. Later on, uh, what happened is he cast another Elvish Mystic. I think, was, I, was, I think it was actually a Vampire Nighthawk, actually. So he cast another Vampire Nighthawk. So what I did is used Venser to uh, target, to exile my own Detention Sphere. The Vampire Nighthawk returns to my opponent's control. It doesn't have an Enter the Battlefield effect like Grey Merchant of Asphodel would or something like that. But then at the end of my turn, I get the Detention Sphere back, it re-enters the battlefield, I target the Nighthawk again, and now I get both of them. Right, so it's actually pretty cool, because it means that as long as you control this, your opponent can't cast that, because you can basically just keep capturing them using Venser's Exile ability, which is actually really, really sweet. So that's the essential part of the deck. The rest of the deck is pretty simple. Now, you have pretty much even blue and white. Uh, you need both of them, and you can't get... It's really You really don't want to get mana screwed, so we're running 22 lands. The flooded strands are kind of expensive, but not really necessary. If you don't want them, you could put almost anything else in there, like uh, even Terramorphic Expanse or something like that, or maybe just even a plane in one island. Uh, Glacial Fortress is super nice. Uh, not that expensive. They're like less than a dollar each. I think they're 99 cents. Um, Hollow Fountain is pretty nice. Again, uh, you know, if you don't have it, there's other dual lands. The thing is, you want fast lands as much as possible. Uh, the other one I have is Sea Chrome Coast. Sea Chrome Coast actually works really well, but by far, by far, the best is Glacial Fortress because you're between Hallowed Fountain Island and Plains. You're gonna almost always have one of these out. Uh, Glacial Fortress almost never comes in tapped, which is just awesome. Um, other than that, the land base is very simple. It doesn't, you know, it's not too too expensive, and you could cut out these flooded strands to make it cheaper as well. Like I said, Gataxian Probe is kind of expensive. You can cut those out and add any cheap card draw you want. Like even more Compulsive Research. Uh, compulsive Research right now is five tickets on, like not. Five 5.05 so like 5 cents basically um, so it's pretty it's pretty cheap Venser is the other big cost item in the deck uh, there at this time there are about seven tickets each you pretty much cannot get away without that you have to have him in there so unfortunately that's a must-have now going to the sideboard just depends what you'd ex- what you might expect in your games but what I chose is uh, has worked out actually pretty well 
Um, so we have Path to Exile. Now, Path to Exile is not really as good as Journey to Nowhere, uh, Oblivion Ring, Detention Sphere, and stuff like that, because you can, um, because it doesn't stay on the battlefield, and so you can't trade it away later. Okay, so that kind of sucks. But there's some battles where your opponent just has too much stuff. It's just too fast, and Path to Exile is the only way to really slow them down. Uh, the other thing that Path can do is there's some things that we can't trade, for instance. Now, normally, like let's say your opponent casts like a 5-mana like Grey Merchant of Asphodel or something like that. You can't trade that, so there's no like we don't have any five mana cost things to trade for it. So what you'd have to do is either Oblivion Ring it or Detention Sphere it or something like that, um, and that's okay. But then if your opponent somehow manages to destroy that enchantment, then that's going to re-enter the battlefield and kind of hurt you again. So a Path to Exile might be a better a better option for dealing with that threat. Uh, another one is Stony Silence, so activated abilities of artifacts can't be activated. This is one I just threw in there, but I haven't used it yet ever in sideboarding. Um, I guess it would be good in Affinity, but against Affinity, but if you're playing Affinity, you're probably just going to get killed anyways. This isn't a tier 1 deck. Um, but I don't know, I threw it in there. I haven't really missed it. Maybe a, a Ghostly Prison might be a better one to slow your opponent down. Um, and because you're not really ever attacking with your own creature, you could just trade away your Ghostly Prison as well if you really needed to. Uh, so Ghostly Prison might be a better choice here. Uh, st so Stony Silence, eh, it's, it's I'm not sure about that one. Rule of Law is actually pretty nice. Okay, Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. This works really well against Burn. Uh, assuming you survive to turn three, but especially against combo decks as well. So if you have like uh, something like Storm or something like that that your opponent's playing against, not letting them cast more than one spell each turn really sucks for them. And you can trade it to them because it doesn't matter who controls this enchantment. Okay, Leyline of Sanctity is awesome. Uh, it's again, it's pretty expensive at about five, maybe six dollars, six tickets per card. Um, so it's it's tough, it's it's kind of expensive, but definitely worth it. If you can, especially like you get like Burn or uh, like there's a game I played against Discard or something like that. This one is like super super good. Um, I can't really I can't really say how can't really stress enough how good this one is in the sideboard. Supreme Verdict is really nice. I wish I had sideboarded this in against uh, one of the matches that I ended up losing. Um, this is actually you know, a really great include and not too expensive. Um, and then the last ones are Sun Droplets. Again, I've never actually, I haven't played any burn decks so far, but the problem with a burn deck, is, and the reason why I have so much hate against burn is because burn doesn't really have any like a straight burn doesn't really have any permanence to trade with. Okay, like some of them will run monastery Swiss spears and goblin guides and things like that, but really they don't really have a ton of threats like that are going to be on the battlefield a lot. So uh, there's not really a ton you can trade with. So things like uh, sun droplets and uh, leyline of sanctity really help you to pr help protect you against things like that. So those cards. Uh, so that's basically the deck. Uh, as I put it together. The whole thing uh, was 110 tickets online, but can be made much cheaper. Like I said, you can get rid of a few things like uh, Stony Silence might not be necessary. Um, you know, Cataxian Probes might not be necessary. Hollow Fountains could be replaced with just straight uh, isle Plains and Islands. Same thing in Flooded Strand. Or you could just use Terramorphic Expanse or something like that. So there's lots of ways to make this a little bit cheaper, but for modern, it's actually pretty budget, and it's a ton of fun to play. So, anyways, uh, up in the same playlist, there is going to be a game footage of a couple different games I played with this one, and hopefully, you'll watch those and get a sense of how this deck is played out. Um, yeah, I think it's just a, a really, really fun deck to play. So, anyways. If you do like this video and do like the deck techs I'm doing, please like and subscribe to my channel. If there is a, a type of deck you'd like to see, then please uh, leave a comment in the comment box. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.